are you dating anyone and how do you keep God in the center of it? Am I dating anyone and how do you get how do you have God in the center of it? Um so yeah, I'm currently uh, in a relationship with a really godly girl. Um, she loves Jesus. She's beautiful. Um, she is deeply involved in ministry. She gets to impact the lives of many people. Um, her name is... from the start that hey we this was gonna be a Christ-centered relationship and uh, we were gonna have him in the, in the he was gonna be in the center of it I don't know if you guys are familiar with the story of uh, Jonathan and David uh, but they made sure that that God was in the center of their relationship and it was a covenant and, and so I pray uh, uh, the Lord and I said hey Lord I, I really want to lead this wisely and I want to um, care for her serve, serve her um, and I want to be able uh, that when other people see our relationship that they would see you Jesus so that was my prayer um, and so one of the things that we do we we pray um, a lot together and um, oftentimes we read scripture together we read um, Christian books and we read Christian books like Christian uh, marriage our first and dating books our first book together was uh, Bonhoeffer if you know anything about Bonhoeffer <laughs> he's a German theologian so as we were getting to know each other we were reading German theology it was pretty good uh, <laughs> Um, but yeah, we, we want to make sure that Jesus is in the center and we um, That's our priority and we need to ask the Lord that that happens every single day when we talk when we do things and yeah um, So that's what we do. Yeah, and I like what you said. It started with Us both kind of knowing we are both wholeheartedly following God like when you're Looking to start a relationship with someone or start um, dating someone especially if, if you're looking for someone for marriage it's important to start as your foundation is like okay God's gonna be in the center um, 
and I was always looking for someone who was already following the Lord, not someone who I would have to change them to become a Christian. But we started off our relationship with God being in the center, and I think it's just good to like start like that. But we need to go faster and answer the rest of these questions, yeah. or else we're never gonna. Okay, what are things a Christian girl should be looking for in a potential guy? Okay, it's a good question. It's a great question. Yeah. Um. So first, you want to make sure that he is. Uh, Fully, fully devoted follower of Jesus. You don't want to settle just with a church boy. Um, maybe he can tell you, yeah, I go to church every Sunday, but to me that doesn't mean anything. So you want to make sure that uh, he's devoted, uh, that he loves Jesus with all his heart, that he has a, um, that he's a disciplined guy with, um, with scripture and prayer, and that he's seeking the Lord in every single thing that he does and that he says. Um, and also you want to make sure I think an important thing also is reputation is pretty important uh, what other people talk about him like maybe um, if there are other people are like man I don't see any red flags with him uh, he loves Jesus he loves people and it's so evident in the way he interacts with others um, you're gonna be able to see that through uh, other people and, and, and when you uh, hang out in community with them uh, or, or it's not too exclusive but you see other how other people respond around him that's a pretty like uh, an important thing that you can you get to see his character if he's a he, if he's a man of integrity uh, if he walks in purity uh, the way he looks at you the way he talks to you the way um, he does things I think that's really important but but you want to make sure that he's a, a, a a man who loves Jesus with all his heart uh, you're gonna be able that's gonna be a noticeable again in the way that he talks the words that come out of his mouth uh, in the way that he interacts with other people uh, so you want to make sure that those are important things that you look at in the beginning that he had that he knows the gospel right we, we want to make sure that he has a clear understanding of the gospel and that that he's saved right because yeah. a lot of people go to church but again doesn't mean anything you want to make sure that he has a clear understanding of uh, the saving grace of Jesus. So yeah. um, you want to make sure that that's really important. Side note, before I dated Johnny, I asked a bunch of my friends and people in our circle. <laughs> I'm like, should I should I go on a date with him? And everyone was like, you have to go on a date with him. He has a heart of gold. He He's so awesome. So. And I gave them a couple bucks to, to say that. No. So. <laughs> but yeah, so that was like really to me there were no red flags there because I was like his reputation to other people is really good okay so this is kind of the same question but flipped a lot of people ask this what are you looking in a girl in a girl or like what are Christian guys looking for in a girl besides the fact that she loves Jesus so we know like okay you want someone who loves Jesus but she's wondering what else um I would say um someone who has uh, daily habits, who practice daily habits of grace, in other words that another person who is uh, just studying scripture on a regular basis, on a daily basis, a, a woman who spends time in prayer, um, maybe a woman who's either getting disciple or discipling other girls, I think that's important that she's pointing, on to, pointing into other people. Um, and uh, uh, another thing that is really important for me, and I've told Ashley this, is a, a, girl, uh, a woman who is um, deeply committed to her local church, um, who loves her local church and is serving there, it's either discipling girls or involved in any type of ministry. I know that I, what attracted me from Ashley was she loves the church, but at the same time she's really deeply involved in her ministry with Coffee and Bible Time, and that was really, uh, really attractive for me that she loved um, Jesus, and it was really practically displayed in the way uh, she uh, just executed her ministry. So you want to make sure someone that you want to make sure that you look for someone who, of course, loves Jesus, and it's evident in the way that she serves. Maybe she's serving in her local church. Is she committed to a local church? Um, and and she she has those spiritual habits on a daily basis as well. How do you know if a guy is pursuing you and not just being overly friendly? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> Um, so I think that, that there has to be something important, and I feel like a lot of a lot of women have um, are hesitant to kind of should I ask him or should I kind of have should I pursue because I feel like guys should do the pursuing and I, I should just allow God to move His heart towards me. But but I would say if you're confused about certain 
aspects of his behavior towards you, uh, I would say that just be bold and ask him. I'm like, and just be like, hey, you know, I'm really confused with some attitudes that you've had towards me, and I just want to know if you have any uh, any interest to me, because uh, it could be really, really um, confusing for you, and can make you anxious, and it can make you, it can just create some distress in your life when you're like, uh, does he like me? Does he not? It feels like he shows some affection, but um, and, and let me just say this: a man of character will, will won't play with your heart. Yeah. He won't be flirtatious. Uh, we know all their intention, right? So you want to make sure that if, if the guy is a man of character, a man who loves Jesus, he eventually is going to tell you, hey, I'm interested in you. And if he doesn't, but you're still confused, just maybe you approach him and say, hey, I'm really confused with some attitudes that you have or maybe some things that you've said. Uh, just tell me, be straight with me. And, and maybe you can teach that boy to be a man by uh, doing that. So... Um, you know, ladies, please help us guys to uh, to become men, right? And, and maybe in the process of sanctification, God uses other people and women yeah. to help us grow. So so maybe you should be part of that aspect of his life as well. That's really good. I think girls get really scared to say something. <laughs> yeah. It's scary. It's scary. It's really scary. But this kind of goes along with that. Um, kind of similar should a man do all the pursuing? It's a great that's question. That's literally the question. Okay. I thought you were going to say something else. <laughs> no, I mean, that's it. So, if you look at through scripture, um, and I always start like this because I guess I'm a pastor and I went to Bible <laughs> college, but if you look throughout scripture, you're going to see something, especially in the Jewish culture, is that the guy was the, the person who did the pursuing. Um, you know, and back in the day, the, the marriages were arranged, so the girl didn't have any say for the most part. Um, and so this is, I love, uh, in one instance, um, Abraham wants a wife for his son. And so what he does is he sends his servant to find for a wife. And then the servant goes through different aspects of like praying the, uh, and asking the Lord to provide someone for his, for Abraham's son. And eventually God provides that. But, but I'm saying this because in every instance that you see kind of romantic uh, event, you always see the men pursuing. Um, and, and so I would say that guys should take the initiative um, to take the first steps. However, I, I don't think there's nothing wrong with a girl uh, approaching uh, another guy and be like, hey, would you be interested in getting to know each other more? I think there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, we live in a culture where like, oh, if the, the guy doesn't ask a, a girl out and she's interested, maybe she has to wait her entire life. Uh, but I think there's nothing wrong. Like, and, and again, this is something that I've heard growing up a lot. Is like, what's the worst thing that could happen? Maybe he's going to say no and that's okay. And maybe you know already from the beginning that he's not interested. Um, so I would say that, yeah, guys should uh, kind of be the ones who are pursuing and take the initiative. But but maybe if you're interested and in, in I think there's nothing wrong with like taking the first step and, and maybe approaching that person. And again, you don't approach someone as a target, I'm like, I want to approach him so he can become my boyfriend. Uh, if you are a follower of Jesus, you will want to approach someone knowing, uh, more importantly, that he's your brother in Christ, right? And so you want to build a relationship with him. You want to build a friendship with that person. And then if God allows for that to go deeper, then he will make it clear. But uh, there's nothing wrong with uh, kind of making the first step if you are a woman. Why are godly men around the world waiting so long to get married? <laughs> Godly girls are waiting. Godly girls are waiting. Why are guys taking so long? Yeah, that's what. Um, I think in general, everyone, guys and girls, like the number has just rised as the years have gone on, you know? Mm -hmm. um, for people at the age of getting married, you uh -huh. know? So is this asking a girl, asking like maybe she's dating someone and he's not step stepping up to... Uh, pop out the question or I think a lot of girls feel like they're kind of waiting for a guy to pursue them but guys are and like guys aren't really stepping up and like pursuing and like it doesn't even seem like a lot of guys even want to get married like until they're in their upper 20s or early 30s yeah and that, and you know, that that's okay. I think that um, if you go back to First Corinthians seven, Paul talks about like, you know, 
God has given some people different gifts, like the gift of singleness, the gift of being married, and there's nothing wrong if people don't have the desire to get married. We, we live in a culture where like, uh, we look down on those who are single, um, and, and I know that it's easy for me to say when I have my girlfriend next to me, uh, but when I wasn't dating Ashley, um, you know, I was like, Lord, I don't, um, I know that maybe you could potentially give me the gift of singleness, but uh, can you give it to someone else? Because I don't want it. And, <laughs> but I think that we need to understand that this, this is a beautiful gift, you know, in both seasons, to be married and to be single. And, and, and so if there are guys who are not, quote unquote, stepping up, it's maybe because God has either called them to be single on that season of their life, God's called them to be single. And so uh, maybe we shouldn't put pressure on people like, man, you need to date, you need to date. Um, and, and also I know that it's, it's easier to say, hey, find contentment in this season of singleness, but, but maybe that's what, maybe God wants to work in your heart as you are either waiting for someone or maybe you're just um, kind of growing in your relationship with Jesus. So I would say continue asking the Lord, like there's nothing wrong with having the desire to have a boyfriend or if you're a guy to have a girlfriend, right? And to eventually get married. Um, but if you are right now in that season of like, I'm, I'm waiting for someone and I feel like God hasn't responded. And and let me just tell you, um, sister, just to uh, continue finding joy in the Lord and just understand that your identity is not finding a guy, that your identity is not finding a boyfriend. Your identity is fully rooted in the person of Jesus. Um, and I know it's easier said than done, right? Because I know that it hurts and, and you're in a season where you really want to have a companion for the rest of your life. But, yeah. but I just want to tell you that um, even if you have a boyfriend, you're still gonna, or even eventually a husband, you're still gonna feel like your longings are not fully satisfied because we need to understand that your longings are only fully found or satisfied in the person of Jesus. So um, I don't know if he answers the question, but um, oh, yeah. just find contentment in this season of life. What advice can you give to Christians who still struggle in their spiritual life? Uh, first thing I would say is like, hey, be encouraged because you're not alone. <laughs> Um, you know, I grew up in a Christian home and, and uh, I grew up with my dad is a pastor and my mom loves Jesus and my sisters and um, and so you would think that everything was good but and I've been a believer for so many years I've been to Bible school I'm out currently a pastor and you would say maybe that guy has it all together but if I'm honest with you I struggle with my faith on a regular basis you know the enemy um, you know it says in the Bible that we do not uh, wrestle against flesh and blood blood but against principalities and the powers of the air in other words the, the enemy doesn't want you to uh, love Jesus and so he's gonna put distractions in your mind he's gonna put things in your heart so that you would be distracted so that you would rob your attention from what's really important which is Jesus so uh, I would just encourage you saying hey you're not alone we're all struggling with that but but one another practical advice will be just surround yourself with people will help you uh, your relationship with Jesus. Get, get plugged in in a ministry, get plugged in a community where yep. people can help you. You're not alone in this struggle because if you if you really get in the mess of the local church, you're going to see how messy it is, but how beautiful it is. And yeah. so you're going to hear how, how many people are struggling uh, in their uh, journey with Jesus and you're not alone in this. Yep. What are your top three character traits or values you want to improve on? Um... I want to be um, someone who loves better. Um, I want to be more gracious. <coughs> and um, patient. Maybe Ashley can, can agree. <laughs> okay, what's appropriate to talk about on a first date? Mm, that's a great question. <laughs> um, so let me give you this story time. Uh, story time. So our very first date with Ashley, we were in downtown Chicago. I remember I took her to my favorite place, which is um, pizza place. Deep dish. Deep dish. Giordano's. Giordano's. Um, so I took her <coughs> to my favorite place, and we were having a conversation together. We had walked around. It was so cold in the city. Yeah. And I say, hey, Ashley. Um, just and, and you need to understand we have, I've known Ashley for two years but but that was our first time that we were actually having a deep conversation on a date on we a were date. never on a date and so before. I said Ashley uh, I just want you to know I'm a pastor and I have a love for the local church <laughs> and I don't know what your future looks like I don't know what God wants to do with you but I just want you to know that God has called you to has called me to uh, pass to the local church and so uh, I don't know what he has for you, but if you want to uh, go somewhere else, that's you know we can, can continue being date. friends. But 
I don't think I said it that, that way, but maybe <laughs> it sounded that way. And, and the, what I heard was, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a pastor, and if you don't if you don't feel called to be in the local church, then we're not gonna date anymore because that's I what I want. Yeah, I didn't but say it like no, that. No, no, you but... didn't. But that's what I heard. But anyways, so I would say don't do that. Um, because and, after I heard that, I was really like intimidated. Yeah, and, and I look back with regret, and I feel like you you learn from your mistakes. But um, I think that there's certain things that you're allowed to talk about. Um, you know, when it comes to intimacy or other things that maybe might not be appropriate for the first few days, and even when you're dating, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that you need to ask the Lord always ask the Lord to give you wisdom as you navigate through different things with with the person that you're going on a, on dates with and eventually if, if she or he becomes your boyfriend or girlfriend uh, you want to ask the Lord to give you wisdom in the conversations that you guys have because it can go uh, really intimate really quick and that could be really dangerous for, for both of you so so ask the Lord to give you discernment and wisdom as you navigate through different topics or different things uh, right you, you want to make sure that there's a level of depth uh, but maybe it might not be the best uh, time to talk about having babies on your second date, right? So, uh, for, for definitely ask the Lord for wisdom as you talk. And I also think, yeah, I also think for girls and guys to, it's important to take the pressure off of a first date. And we were just talking about this, the school we went to, there was a lot of pressure on getting coffee with somebody and going on a first date. <laughs> um, but... I think that if you take that pressure off of yourself and say, okay, this is just a first date, I'm getting to know them, like, there's no pressure if this doesn't work out, it's okay, like, it's okay, I'm, I'm it's a first date, but we get into this, like, mindset of, like, oh my gosh, like, I need to marry this person because I'm going out on a date with them, and it's like, no, you're just getting to know them, so I think that's really important, um, we need to say this one fast and we can get into this in another video one day okay. but how did you get over the initial hump of becoming more than just friends um, the initial hump you want to answer that yeah i'll answer oh gosh um well it was a pretty big hump i don't even know i think the only way to answer this question is god changing my heart because he was ready and I wasn't ready. Because I wasn't, it was a big hump for me to get over. But I think that I just put it in God's hands and I told God, I said, God, I feel like I'm at a place where I just, I, I feel like we're just supposed to be friends. And I said, but God, if you want us to be more than that, can you change my heart? And, and lead me to Johnny. And I was praying a lot. And he was praying a lot. And so I think that um, if if you're in a friendship with somebody and God wants you to be together, he'll lead your guys' hearts together. But if he doesn't do that, then I think that's important to follow God in that and just to say like, okay, maybe we're just meant to be friends and to pray about it and to like, we, we spent time apart from each other and just prayed. <laughs> so, God God is does not leave us alone in our relationships and all of that. He's He leads us and guides us even in that. So. And I think it's just to finish that idea. It's, yeah. um, if you are navigating through that confusing season with the person that you're going on a date on dates with, and you're like, is this the guy that God wants me to be in a relationship with maybe uh, if you're confused i think that there's nothing wrong with like creating some distance for a little bit yeah um and i think it was during that season that actually say like i really miss johnny you know yes and um yeah so there's nothing wrong with creating some distance we're like hey maybe not no texting no seeing each other for a little bit and see what god does in our hearts if, if nothing changed all right then then i think it's then yeah god will make it clear but yeah. maybe creating distance might be a practical but you're right, I realized when we were gone from each other that I really missed him. I, I miss talking to him and spending time with him and um, just wanted to be with him. So, um, which I was not expecting. So, who knows? God will, God 
God will work in your heart. Um, let's see, a few more. Is marriage something that's important to you? Um, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, well, depend. If you would have asked me this six years ago, uh -huh. I probably would have said, kind of, yeah. But uh, today, I. As the Lord has grown me, you know, in different areas of my life, I think that um, I have a desire for marriage. And um, we were talking with Ashley that uh, we we both have each other. We uh, we we're having each other with open hands, right? Open palms. And but and I don't know what God is going to do with us. But um, when we started, when we when we got into a serious relationship. Mm -hmm. We knew that we were not going into this relationship just because, just because, or just because we were bored. We're yeah. Like, hey, let's just hang out. Let's see how this. We thought, like, hey, if God, we see that God would could potentially do something with this relationship. I could potentially see you as my future husband. I can potentially see you as my future wife. Um, so there's a, a pastor called J.P. Pakula. We were talking about him, and he said that if you're not get, if you're not um, ready to uh, get married then don't date uh, maybe that's a little bit too drastic but yeah. um, but at the same time um, if you're not ready to get married you date what you pretty much saying to the other person is like hey let's let's spend some time together but eventually I'm gonna break up with you right yeah um, but uh, so that marriage should be in conversations um, maybe not the first date, not the second or uh, as you guys uh, continue developing a stronger relationship together um, but I think marriage is, is really important for me because I'm not dating uh, someone just because, but because God has given me a desire that, that that person could potentially become my wife in the future. Yes. Do you have any dating advice for Christian women from a man's perspective? <laughs> dating? Dating advice for girls. like. Yeah, so I have three three important things. Um, number one. Whoa, pastor. Yeah, three points, right, Baptist. Um, <laughs> so number one would be pray. Number two would be pray. And number three would be pray. pray. Um, so I know that we hear that all the time, but we tend to um, undermine the, the power of prayer. Um, and, and that prayer is not just like God gave me a godly man. Sure, that could be part of the prayer, but, um, but at the same time, it's like, God, while, while I'm waiting or while I'm going on dates, like work in my heart. Um, mm. Maybe ask the Lord to so that you would develop faithfulness during this season. Maybe you are waiting and you've been waiting for years and years and, 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 and it has become a burden for you. Um, but maybe instead of asking the Lord to provide a future husband, maybe ask the Lord so that, so that you would be a woman who's developing faithfulness during this season of waiting. Uh, or even if you're still going on dates with a, with a man, with a godly man, I would still ask the Lord that you be doing this season that you will become the woman that He has created you to be. Yeah. A woman of integrity, a woman of character, yeah. uh, a woman that would seek the Lord overall because it could be really easy to seek the Lord while while you're waiting and then God gives you the man that you've been praying for and then forget about him. Yeah. So I would say continue praying uh, uh, to the Lord while you're single, while you're dating, while you're engaged while you're married and eventually God will take you home to eternity, right? But yeah. continue praying and asking the Lord to work in your heart as, as you are in these different seasons in your life. Do you feel intimidated by women who are more spiritual? Yeah, right now. Like, I want to get out of the car because <laughs> I'm really intimidated by no. Um Yeah, you know, I've, at one time I... Um, one time I, I, I went into a meeting where there are a lot of godly women of my church because they were, um, you know, preparing a series for the next few, um, for the next few months for the Bible studies and, and they wanted to have different men to kind of get their perspective and so I went in and I see all these godly women and I was really, really intimidated because they're <laughs> godly and they love Jesus and, um, and and I know that I say that as a joke but, but when, I, when I'm with Ashley, I'm just like, whoa, like this is... She just loved Jesus, and I'm always um, just intimidated. In fact, I, I almost every time I'm having a conversation with you, I feel like I'm gonna crash because I get nope. distracted. But um, but yeah, I, I get intimidated. But at the same time, it kind of pushes you to love Jesus more, and that's yeah. what I love about Ashley is that um, every time I'm with her, and 
and every time I have a conversation, I just it just makes me love Jesus even more. So that intimidation should always lead you to growth. Do you think some guys are intimidated by girls who are more spiritual and that that turns them off from pursuing them because they're more Yeah. Yeah. Um but again, or that, I was just wondering. that should push a guy to, you know, to develop a, a type of growth to love Jesus even more. Yeah. Um, and kind of maybe God uses a, a woman in their life for the sanctification process. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, but maybe if you are a woman who loves Jesus, is in a higher level of maturity in, this, in your spiritual life. And, and you like a, 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 a guy who maybe not might not be... Um, in your level of maturity, don't ever think that that you are. Um, man, do I have a too much of a high standard? I just want to encourage you, like, don't. You should always have a high standard. Never yes. settle. Um, and if that guy wants to have a relationship with you, uh, but he's not really growing, then you know, graciously tell him, hey, uh, I think we both have an interest for one another, but I think this is not the best season that we yeah. should be in a relationship together. So yeah, just amen. be honest. Okay, last question. Um, comment down below if you watch this long. <laughs> okay, what is your definition of a godly man compared to just like a Christian boy? Like, what's the difference? Well, you just don't want to settle for a Christian Christian guy because you know we live in a in a time where like you don't even know what that means now. Yeah. Um, it's so subjective these times that maybe you can tell but mom he's a Christian guy or dad he's a Christian guy like we, we are meant to be for we're meant for one another uh, but that could be subjective what do you mean by he's a Christian guy does he go to church every Sunday anybody can go to church every Sunday does he go to a Bible study does he go to um, like a big gathering of, of young adults or, or, or youth group or wherever he goes um, you don't want to set up for someone who just go to church Right, that's that's a great aspect. You want to be some, you want to be with someone who's committed to the local church. But don't yeah. think that um, because that person is going to church on on Sundays, he loves Jesus. Right. Um, so attendance attendance doesn't equal uh, spiritual spirituality. Yeah. So you want to be careful with that. Uh, but the more time you get to spend with that person, you're gonna be able to see um, if if he practices different habits in his life. Is his Bible open on a daily basis or is it always closed, it's full of dust or whatever electronic device, whatever he uses. But Or does he spend time uh, with the Lord in prayer, right? Does he have uh, Christian um, guys that he's pointing out, uh, that he's pointing into or does he have mentors that are pointing into yeah. his life? I think that it's really important that you see his community who are the kind of people that he's surrounded with. Yeah. Um, and, and at the same time, if he's uh, like, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about this. I feel like I like you, but I feel like I'm not, like I'm confused. Like yeah. if he's like wishy-washy with the way he treats you, then that's just a boy. And and maybe you need to help him how to become uh, a man. Or maybe not. Maybe he needs godly men who are going to help him to become a man. But maybe, and, and again, it goes back to what we said before. Maybe God uses you in the process of his sanctification to realize like, man, I'm just a boy and I need to become a man yeah. um, and, and so you need to be uh, careful with that again reputation is a big thing like what do other people say about him um, and what are, are the people that he's surrounded with so yeah. look for those things and, and I think that it, it eventually we will be evident right what are the things that he likes talking about does he like talking about himself more than he likes talking about Jesus well that's one thing right that that will give it out um, so just look for those things yeah, and I dated somebody before Johnny like, a few years ago, and I realized that he wasn't a godly man. He was a Christian guy, but as I started dating him more, I realized he was, wasn't was a godly man, and the godly man that I had been praying for, and um, it just, it became evident by the way he talked, um, like his language, what came out of his mouth. Just certain things that were popping up as like little red flags and um, I think it would have been easy for me to settle um, but I'm glad that I waited and I think that if you're in that situation um, really just pray and seek the Lord in prayer and ask him to just really lead you and um, give you discernment in that situation on what you should do. Um, so, and I can tell you that that's what I did, and God did not fail to direct me exactly where he wanted me to go. So, yeah. And I think that 
there's nothing wrong with, uh, maybe you might have done a video where you explain this, but make a list of something that you're looking at. You're looking uh, for a godly man, right? And, and maybe it might be specific things. Um, but for the broad things, the broad spiritual things, write out the different things that you're looking on for a, for, a, for a man. But at the same time, you need to look at the list and be like, do I also have those characteristics, right? Yeah. Am I a yeah. woman of integrity? Am I kind? Am I gracious? Do uh, yeah. I love people, right? Because yeah. we might have expectation of other people, but what about us, right? Yeah. So we need to also like, um, am I the person that the person I'm praying for is praying for, right? Yeah. So we need to make sure that that's really important. Um, and never settle like that's if I can if you didn't hear anything else in this video like, never settle have yes. have a high standard and maybe yeah. Uh, yeah but but you might be like Johnny I've been waiting for so long because I'm, I'm not settling I'm like man that's so waiting. good like yeah. uh, like you're not gonna the waiting is worth right it's worth it and, and God is gonna honor your waiting and continue and asking the Lord to develop that faithfulness in your heart during this yeah. this season of life all right, guys, that's all we're going to do for today. Um, hopefully, we'll come out with more videos with Johnny and them because I love having Johnny on Coffee and Bible Time. It just adds a whole new perspective that we haven't had before. So thank you for watching this video, and make sure you share with a friend. And, um, yeah, love you guys. See ya. Bye.